another Monday. This is Aleda Castillo on Sully Radio's Culturally Lit on WVX 1460 on the AM dial. And we are hot today. We have some powerful people in the house. Uh, AJ. Yes, yes, yes. AJ Woodson. How you doing? Would you make that special introduction of our guests? So this is AJ Woodson from Black Westchester filling in again. Um, I started to get used to being here. I think like three weeks in a row or two weeks in a row or Listen, something like that. This is what happens when I travel internationally. Yeah, Somebody yeah. has to cover. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting in today and I'm interviewing two women that I've had the opportunity to interview on my show. Um, Westchester County District Attorney <laughs> Candidate Mimi Roca and Yonkers City Court Candidate Ferris Shako. Uh, who is attempting to make history as the first African-American woman on the Yonkers uh, City Court bench, right? Yep. Say hello to the people. Hello. Thank you for having me, Aleda, AJ, WVOX, and Janelle. I'm happy to be here with you, Mimi, also. Hello. I am so happy to be back here with you, AJ, yes, on yes, a different yes. show, and yes, Aleda, yes. who I get to see a lot on the campaign trail, and I'm thrilled thrilled to be here with you Varis. Oh. Um, you're you're going to you're going to make history here. I can feel it. We uh, we can't wait. Um, I just want to uh, give a quick disclaimer. I'm going to step out and just got and we have Janelle, Hola. Uh, our uh, guest co-host that's been permanently hosting with me because <laughs> Uh, we've become friends. I can't get rid we of her. We love each other so much. Yes. So, uh, uh, full disclaimer, I am working for um, in Mimi's campaign. So, I have to disclose that. And I did not prep anybody with any questions. This is going to be fully uh, the interests of the community, the minds of the host. And I am going to step out. AJ and Janelle is going to join you. And thank you for coming. So, um, uh, quick question. So, I've, now I've already. I just interviewed you. That's right. Uh, last week, and I've interviewed you a couple of weeks ago. Um, so since then, now what? What I'm going to talk to Mimi real quick. I know a lot has been said. And a new article just came out about the release of what they call the bad cop list. Um, some paper, the Yonkers Times, actually said uh, your critique in Black West just the critique is what actually forced him to bring out the list. And um, you've been critical of the list, as has been some of the PPA presidents. Would you like to sure. just start right there? So, first of all, I do want to point out that this is kind of a trend. I feel like I've been making a difference in the Westchester DA's office already, just in this campaign. And this is why primaries are important, actually. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I, whenever I put out a plan, a substantive policy plan, a couple days later, a week le later, the current DA puts out his version of a plan. When I when we call for the release of important information to the community, like the uh, adverse credibility list about police officers, otherwise known as the bad cop list, uh, you know, he, he eventually puts it out. So this this is democracy at work. Um, what I was saying about the this list is that it, it you know DAs all around the state had already put it out. Right, right. And no one could figure out why the current DA was not putting it out. And the community is entitled to know if there are police officers or, uh, or law enforcement in general who can't testify because of credibility issues. So here's the problem. He didn't put the list out. Then he put the list out, and quite frankly, I think the list was a little too broad. He included things in there, and this is why the PBA, I think, in particular is mad. And, and on this, I, I agree with them. He put out a list that included a lot of uh, per, kind of personal information about police officers that didn't necessarily go to credibility. But the really shocking thing to me is that what became clear when the list came out is why he had been delaying putting it out. It wasn't because uh, of anything other than him protecting himself, because on that list was the person who runs his intelligence center, who has some significant credibility issues. He was found to have a lack of candor by the Federal Bureau of Investigation when he worked there. Now, this isn't about that man's character. This is about the current DA's judgment in hiring that person of all the retired federal law enforcement in the country to run his DA office. And uh, he did that, and he didn't want to disclose that. And so he delayed putting out the list. And, you know, we should not have elected officials making decisions like that just to protect their own political fortunes. Absolutely. And that's one of the things actually we called out in an article 
why hasn't the Westchester County DA put out the list? And it couldn't be because his uh, in, in, intelligent agent, uh, a, um, the head of intelligence or whatever, was on the list. Um, and then the list came out eventually later. Um, now, you um, are running for Yonka City Court. That's correct. Um, Before we pivot, now, can I, I ask a question? Can I, can I ask you both a question? To what extent do you think withholding that information puts the public in danger? Well, what it does is it jeopardizes cases potentially because, um, you know, what happens is if, if the public and people in the legal system don't have the information, they can't adequately um, per- pursue their own their real defenses. And um, they can't, you know, it, it may not be until it's too late that they find out that information. And so, and, and from a prosecutorial point of view, I mean, it's important to the prosecutors, too, to get this right. Because you want to make sure that you're pursuing the right cases and not spending precious time and resources on cases that you're going to end up having to plead out or even dismiss because of credibility issues with a, with a witness. Well, um, and I'll, I'll just add... And then we'll move on. Um, the list is something that DAs have been putting together for the longest. And they share, excuse me, um, with the prosecutor's office to to tell them about officers that have credibility. Maybe have, and, and it's supposed to be credibility issues like um, gathering um, an investigation, gathering information, um, falsifying records, anything that that would lead to credibility issues. Unfortunately, um, and I'll just say my disappointment with the list, and I will be interviewing him um, March 29th on our show. So, you know, I'll give him a chance to actually talk about this himself. Um, Some of the people, and that was the critique of the Yonkers PBA and um, the the Westchester County PBA, some of these people that were put on there, somebody had a DWI like 20-something years ago, that doesn't take away from their credibility in, 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 in testifying in a current case. So I don't think that that was um, that's a person that should have been on the list. And um, I, I, and, and I, again, I will ask him when I interview him. But it appears that because pressure was put on him to release a list, he put to, he put out a list that had, that had some people on there that just didn't right? shouldn't have been on there. Yeah, yeah so it's just like to be so, like overthrown. Yeah, yeah. so. Now, I want to talk like I like I mentioned before. Um, you're um, have the chance to make history as the first African American woman on the Yonkers City Court bench. There, um, I know um, I interviewed uh, Elena uh, Elena what's her name? Vasquez last year, and she was saying had she not won, there wouldn't have been any women on the bench this year. Um, so it's. Um, Speak about the importance of having females on the bench. Well, it should be representative of the city and, mm-hmm. and, and the lack of female representation on the bench would, would you know, I why, think why it's, is that important? I think that's a very great question. We do need um, female representation on the bench. We certainly have a lot of females that come before the bench, and I think we bring a certain dynamic. I mean, personally, I've been practicing in that court for the last 15 years. So that's what I personally would be bringing my experience in that court and my experience in Westchester County. I've practiced in all of the major courts here in Westchester, Westchester County. I've done criminal. I've also practiced in the family courts, all of the family courts here in Westchester County. And I've taken my time and gotten to know people and came to learn that being a lawyer was just, it was just as important to listen Mm -hmm. as it is to advocate and meet people where they are, understand where they are and try to get to a solution for them. That's what has allowed me to be successful in Yonkers City Court. And that's what I would be bringing to the bench, an ability to listen, decide on the evidence and treat people fairly and justly when they come before the court. Now, um, can you tell everybody a little bit about your history? Um, um, I think, and let me just say this, I say this on my show a lot. I think, and if, for anybody listening and who will watch this on video later, um, the Westchester District Attorney Office and your judges are some of the most important um, uh, seats that you can vote for because it dictates how your criminal justice will be handled. Um, you know, we vote on mayor and sometimes city council and some of those, but we don't pay enough attention to the judicial seats. And last year I started interviewing a lot more of the judges and now Westchester District Attorney's 
office because I wanted to give the people a little bit more, you know, I, I, hopefully they'll be more informed when they go to the ballot box. So um, talk about, and like I said, I've already asked you all these questions mm-hmm. like a week ago. So um, just share with the people who you are, the person, um, well, and, your, um, and your experience, why you, you're, you're, you're the person they need to vote for okay. for the seat. Well, I've been living in Yonkers since I came back from law school. I did an, er- an interview earlier today where I explained that I went to Wisconsin to visit that school after getting a scholarship to a law school upstate in upstate New York. But I went to visit Wisconsin before I said no to it because I like to see, you know, what I'm saying no to, what I'm saying yes to. And that's what I would be bringing to the bench, a willingness and a determination to make sure I'm looking at the evidence before I make a decision. So I ended up going there and I liked it and I decided to stay there. And had I not gone and seen it for myself, I would have made a different decision. And And once I came back, um, I lived briefly with my parents and then I settled in Yonkers back in maybe 2004 with my husband. I was uh, I later had kids. I have a four and a six year old who attend schools in Yonkers. I've been a class mom, you know, at my daughter's school for the last three years. I'm also a class mom at my son's school. He's in a pre-K three program. I'm also a South Yonkers Girl Scout troop leader. So when you see the Girl Scouts out there selling their cookies, please buy it from them. Um, And I've been involved in the PTA and so on. But I've actively practiced as a lawyer consistently in Yonkers for the last 15 years. It has been fulfilling to me because I see that I make a difference in the lives of my clients one person at a time. And so that's why I'm here. I want to continue on and I want to sit on the bench and make sure we bring that, that willingness to listen, to decide on the evidence and to and have people feel respected. Give them an opportunity to be heard when they come before the court. So that's why I'm here. I, I like to educate people as much as possible. So explain the difference between city court and county court. Like you'll handle different type of cases. What, sure. the, what is the difference? So in Yonkers City Court, we have a traffic part. We have a criminal part. We have a landlord tenant part. We have a part for um, small claims and we have a trial part. So cases, whether someone's charged with a felony or a misdemeanor, they would start the case in Yonkers. And if that case remains a felony, it would go up to county court where they have grand juries. And that person, if the grand jury indicts them, would be arraigned under grand jury. And that case would proceed on to trial where the person faces a possibility of state prison. If convicted, a case that is resolved in Yonkers is one where the person would not go to state prison. The most they could face is time in the local jail. And then you have the other civil parts that I mentioned, including an integrated domestic violence part where, you know, if a couple is engaged in a domestic violence incident and there's a family court case and a criminal case, it's heard there also. Now, maybe if a case then goes to the county, would your office be, well, it, when you're elected, would yeah. your office be involved? Yeah, okay. exactly. And can, if I could just go back to a point that, that you that, that you were making, Varys, about, about women mm-hmm. serving in these roles. It's not just, it, it, I mean, I'm agreeing with you, but mm-hmm. I want to emphasize it. Because it isn't just women for the sake of women, right? Mm-hmm. And it isn't just, you know, African American for the sake of it or Hispanic for the sake of it. It's because we bring a different perspective that is so important, particularly to your point, AJ, in the field of criminal justice, because criminal justice affects our lives on both sides. Right. Whether we're talking about victims of crime, women are more often victims of crime, especially when we're talking about certain kinds of crime, obviously, like sexual assault, domestic violence. Um, But also women are the mothers of the people who go to jail Women are, you know, often not as much the ones charged, but it is their families that are torn apart. It is their perspective that they bring. And I do think, not that there aren't men that can do this, but women, I too, want to bring a collaborative approach to the DA's office. That is something that is sorely missing. I want to bring the approach of really listening to the community, really hearing what their concerns are, not running away from it, but putting information out there and then hearing their concerns. And frankly, also trying to collaborate 
and communicate better with law enforcement. I think that is missing right now, too. We're not, it's just not communicating with, with anyone. I keep hearing as I go around Westchester over and over about people in the community trying to get through to the DA's office to talk to them about their concerns and problems and not being able to. Heard about a woman um, who told me her personal story about being harassed online by someone, and she went and met with a prosecutor. This was recently and the prosecutor said, oh, you know, this is kind of a prank. This is like someone TPing your house. That's like saying boys will be boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, right. whether or not there was a crime to charge, this was a male prosecutor who said this to her. And she was she was traumatized by what was happening. She she really, really was traumatized. And I don't think a female prosecutor would have said that to her because they would have understood how frightening it was what she was going through, whether or not there was a crime to charge. And so I think the way we deal with victims, the way we approach people charged in the cases, the way we approach communities can really change dramatically when you have um, women in those positions, whether it be a judge or a district attorney. And and, and not a woman just for the sake of women, because um, it has to be the right woman, because mm-hmm. I was very critical of Janet DeFiore, who... Um, I, and I'm, I'm I'm always bringing this up. She was the the DA when during the Kenneth Chamberlain situation, and um, she would not um, rule that a hate crime when the police were calling him the N word and mocking him. She just said that was just a tactic for them to be able to get his door down to distract him, and 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 she didn't really um, prosecute much of the police brutality, the police criminality incidents that we covered, the stories that we covered. And the one that she did do, it was only because she had prosecuted a lot of the cases. These two Yonkers cops that were falsifying affidavits, actually, she prosecuted a lot of cases. She had to cover herself. And then um, as a follow up, I've been critical of the current um, district attorney because I don't see that he has prosecuted much as far as police criminality as well. And um, hopefully if you get into office, we will see a change because we do need a change. Uh, and that because if you in the in our communities, if you can't, who do you go to when you're being violated by the police who are supposed to protect you? You know what I'm saying? And if you go to the D.A. and then they and you to falls on deaf ears, which a lot of the people come back to me when I cover their stories, they are not getting any uh, resolve from the D.A. So if you want to speak a little bit about that. Yeah, look, I've, I've been very, I think, outspoken about the fact that, you know, a big part of my goal as district attorney is to make clear that public corruption is a top priority. And public corruption means prosecuting, whether it be elected officials or just public office holders, um, law enforcement, whoever it is. You know, we can, they should be held to, they should not get special treatment. They should be held to the same, if not a higher standard, because of their position of public trust. In the system where I came from, in the in the federal system, public officials actually are subject to an enhanced uh, sentencing provision because they hold a position of public trust. So if they do commit a crime and they violate and they and they are found to have committed a crime, um, there is sort of enhanced penalties for that. And and I think that is the right way to think about it. Now, of course. We're not talking about, you know, just making accusations. We're, right. we're you know, and you right. and I have talked about this. I, I considered myself part of law enforcement for 16 and a half years. I think that 99% of law enforcement are honorable people Absolutely. trying to help their community. Absolutely. It's a very hard job. It is an extremely hard job. And I am, I am grateful to them for that. But I think for that reason, when someone does something intentionally wrong, who works in law enforcement, whether it be a police officer, a prosecutor, you know, again, or a, a public office holder uh, or, or someone who works in government. Those people need to be held accountable because it really violates the public trust and it makes the other people who are trying to do their job and do it well, it makes their job so much harder uh, to, to, to keep the community safe, frankly. And this is a good segue into the area that I've mentioned to you about Talk about uh, social workers, physicians, police who've been caught up in the child sex trafficking stings. Yeah. So, again, I mean, this this is similar. You know, that we have there's there's something going on in our society. Right. We've seen case after case recently where it comes out that doctors, right, the Dr. Nasser, the, the 
gymnast doctor, yeah. uh, pediatricians. Recently in Manhattan, it was an OBGYN who sexually assaulted his own patients here in Sarah Lawrence College, right in our neighborhood. It is, uh, was a, a, a father of a college student that was allowed somehow to be on this campus manipulating, sexually assaulting, and trafficking these girls. How does this go on? And it goes on in part because I think we as a society have a blind spot and we allow rich, powerful, usually white men to get away with certain conduct because we don't believe that they could commit these kinds of crimes. And and, and we got to get over that. Amen. This is the Black West Chester Takeover of the Culturally Lit Show. We are on WBOX 1460, 1460 AM. We will be right back after these words. Come fly with us every day on America's legendary community station, WVOX, for you and yours at 1460 on your AM dial or streaming live right now at WVOX.com. Better yet, download the WVOX app and take us with you wherever you go. Westchester County District Attorney candidate Mimi Roca and Yonkers City Court candidate Barris Shaco. Um, and shout out to uh, um, Jen Elkers, who is uh, watching online. And um, uh, someone else named um, Richard Burke said, great candidate. Um, Richard uh, Burke. Is the former police commissioner mm-hmm. of uh, Oh, okay. Hey, uh, Mount Commis- hey Hi, Commis- Rich. How are you? How are you doing? So, so we, we were talking about, we were talking to both um, both ladies um, who are running for office this year. Um, y'all are in the, I guess, the uh, petition state right now, uh, gathering um, signatures. When does that end, and when do you know that you're on the ballot? April 30th uh, is the last day, and you have until, no, I'm sorry, March 30th, 30th okay. is the last day, and you have until April 2nd to file. I thought I got some extra time there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so how do you how do you feel the reception's been for both of y'all uh, as you've been knocking on doors? Look, I I've been just thrilled with the reception. I mean, I again, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm in a primary. I'm running against an incumbent. I didn't expect this to be easy, but you know, yet he only actually won the nomination at the convention by less than three percentage points, which is pretty unheard of for an incumbent, right? Right, uh, actually, especially yes. in Westchester. So um, after that, we've just had incredible momentum, and you know, that's that's true. Now it's been true in fundraising. It's been true in the petitioning. Uh, endorsements. I mean, I, I keep getting wonderful endorsements from elected officials in Westchester and beyond. Uh, Gloria Steinem in, uh, endorsed me last week, uh, which is, you know, kind of personally felt wonderful because she's such an icon of, uh, you know, a powerful woman who uh, wants to, you know, get things get things done. Um, you have another message. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. says, <laughs> oh. Mimi has my full support. Oh, no. that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. <laughs> Kenny's uh, a part of the Westchester uh, Coalition for Police Reform. And, and he's, um, he's you know, doing both, a lot for the community. We both just saw the, the, the film, the, the private mm-hmm. screening of um, the killing of his father, which is uh, definitely moving. Very powerful. Very moving. I hope that actually makes it to the screen um, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. When is the next uh, showing? Well, I, 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 they, they had know? two in Westchester for a private screening. It's, it's right. gone to a few of the film festivals. It's one... Um, awards and and all three of the film festivals that it's been in. Um, I think, you know, the next process is trying to get some kind of distribution or something. I guess, you know, that they're in that stage to see about getting it on to a a, a big screen. Yeah. So, (laughs) so it's, it's, it's making the, the, the film festival circuit right now. So, right. 
Yes. Um, one quick, uh, what did you think of the movie? If you want to speak about it real quick. Sure. I mean, look, I, it's, I think it's important to say that it is um, incredibly powerful. It, um, I, was, I understood after I saw the movie that it was, uh, they were talking about the production of it and how it's sort of based on the characters and based on the events, but it doesn't purport to be you know, a history or a documentary. Mm-hmm. But what it does is it evokes feelings, I think, and thoughts and starts the conversation about this hugely important topic. In a way, the fact that it doesn't purport to be, we don't have to argue about the facts. We don't have to argue about one case, right? Because that, that's happened in this community and probably will, will continue to happen. What we can do is we can talk about the problem. And, and there is a problem. We know that about, about um, law enforcement and communities of color interaction and communities of color being able to trust law enforcement and law enforcement being able to do their job. And again, the way I think most of them want to, which is a thoughtful way of doing public service, but making sure that they're sensitive. Not it's innocent, You know, this was also about someone with a disability, right? right. He had... Um, um, mental health issues, you know, by, by by the movie's description. And so, you know, that can happen, that can be in any community. So, so it brings up a lot of issues that I think are just really important for us to confront and talk about. And that's part of what I want to bring to the DA's office is, you know, transparency. I've talked about this in my platform, putting out data, putting out information about arrest statistics, about financial information about the DA, not running away from it, but putting it out there so we as a society can deal with it. Now, now, um, Barris uh, Shaco, I, I spoke to you about this, you know, with with this culture that we are in, especially with the current occupier of the White House um, and the mentality that is going, you know, um, he's kind of there is no political correctness. He's kind of ripped that off and a lot of people are free to express what it is they express. So so there is a a, a, a certain portion of the population that will hear, you know, you're African American, an African American female. You're going to be fair and just like that. That in a way that maybe has not been done to those communities before. But they're going to perceive that as you're just going to be letting black people go, mm-hmm. and you're not going to be firm on black people. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to speak to that portion because you know you want some of them to vote for you. You need some of them to vote for you too. You know, or the to flip win. side, that she would be unfair to non. Um, right, right, right. People, and, yeah. right. And, 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 how, how does it? Is it non whites and people of color and non people of non I don't know. Anyway, you white know, folks if, versus. If you speak up for folks like of color. having a paper with Black West Justice, if I speak up for black people, I am all, also, I have to be anti something, anti Semitic, yeah, anti white, anti police, anti. Well, right. I'm just speaking for black people. So I wanted you to speak to that because, you know, we need to have those conversations. And there are those portions of the people. Yeah. And the, like I said, the current occupier of the White House kind of green lights them. And, for you know, A doesn't yeah. mean against B. Right. Right. That's be right. For A That's and right. for B right. and be, for you, C. You could be for all of the above. Exactly. So as a judicial candidate, I do have some limits, but I think I can speak to some of these issues. And what I would say is, you know, in my 15 years, you know, working in all of the city courts here in Westchester County and working in the family courts and seeing who's there. I have represented all kinds of people from different countries, different races, different backgrounds. And what I find is that the reaction is the same. When a mother, you know, has her child arrested, it's the same emotion, whether it's sadness, whether it's anger, it's the same. And you have to be able to work with them to get to a resolution, to get them to where they need to be, whether that's getting the child released or getting the child into a program or getting a good resolution for that client. And so what I've learned is that, you know, you just have to be able to work as an attorney, I worked with the courts and I worked with my client to find a middle ground, whether that's going to trial, whether that's a program, whatever it may be. So they have equal footing. They're they're in a position to get the same thing as the next person. And I think that really starts with being able to have a conversation and seeing goes them back to listening, as you were saying before, seeing them as people, mm-hmm. respect, seeing them as how you would want others to see you. And giving them the same treatment. And I think that's what I would bring to the bench. I've lived in this community for the last 16 years. I have kids here, young kids here. I'm a woman 
you know, so I have the same safety concerns. So just like everyone else wants to be safe, I want to be safe, too. And I want my family to be safe. And I didn't get here on my own. I didn't get to be the Democratic nominee by just the support of black people. I had people of color and other groups support me in order to get the nomination. So I'm someone who works with all people. And I want everyone to have a, their fair shake, equal access to justice when they come to Yonkers City Court. And, and, and I thought it was important to bring that up because... And the whole make America great again, it's the fear of the browning of government. You know what I'm saying? And, and there is a general fear of that right now. So, you know, we don't always address issues of race and, you know, uh, something that most of us like not to talk about and act like does not exist, but it does. And that's why I wanted to give you an opportunity to speak to that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I came into. Yonkers City Court back in 2005. And there are certainly a lot more men practicing there than there are women. And there's certainly a lot less African Americans practicing there. And I did not allow that to deter me. You know, I still continued on. And I've gone to all the other courts and see different kinds of people. And I think it's important to have representation. You know, whether it's gender, whether it's race, whether it's orientation, whatever the case may be. So you can bring that understanding. And when you have these people become judges, I think it's good for the society as whole because I'm still a member of the society. I live in Yonkers. Yeah. I don't travel off to another state when I when I would be done with work. I'm traveling 10 minutes to my home. Your so first. I would be accountable, <laughs> right. yeah, you, you know, to the city and I would be impacted by the things that happen in this city. And I think that's what people have to keep in mind. Absolutely. We're going to pick that back up on the other side of this. This is the Black West just to take over of the Coach with the Lit Show on WVOX 1460 AM, the voice of the people at WVOX.com. We'll be back after these words. Dion Nardone. Please tune into my rock and roll oldie show every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The best of doo street corner harmony, soul, and good old rock and roll right here on 1460 a.m. and WVOX.com worldwide. 1460 WVOX. to give both of these candidates. We have uh, Westchester County District Attorney Candidate Lee Roker, and we have Yonkers City Court Candidate Varys Shako. Um, and Varys, if I can start with you. Uh, first, both of y'all, can you just, for people that are seeing y'all for the first time, they want to know more about you, any website, uh, social media, contact information so people can get in touch with y'all or volunteer or donate or whatever. Thank you, AJ. So it's Vera Shako again. I am one of three Democratic nominees for Yonkers City Court Judge. We are in the process of petitioning, so if you would like to volunteer, help us get some signatures. I need a thousand signatures to get on the ballot. Please go to my website. It's shako 2020 Dot com. Leave a message. Sign up to be a volunteer. I also have a Facebook page, which is Shaco Campaign. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And please remember to come out and vote on June 23rd, 2020. You have three votes. So all I ask is that you cast one for me. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, I have a website. It is Mimi Roca 4 da F O R. Uh, dot com and that has links to my policy positions and my social media. I have a Twitter account, Mimi Roca One, the number one. Um, I have a Facebook campaign page, which is Mimi Roca for District Attorney. 
So, you know, all of these things we, you can find. We are petitioning now um, and, and definitely need volunteers. And I just want to say, you know, look, I think the best way to sum up my platform and why I am running now is that I believe that we can, Westchester DA's office should be a model for uh, the rest of the country, both in terms of bringing innovative crime-fighting policies and making sure that we're addressing the modern-day threats that we as communities face, not the old, the school, the threats of the of the old times. Um, I believe that we can be progressive while still keeping our communities safe. And by progressive, I mean truly progressive with real, meaningful justice and substantive policies that I've put out based on consultation with real experts, real uh, reformers. And I think we should be a model of integrity because our country right now so badly needs to have faith in our institutions again. We're not going to get that at the federal level right now. So I want to bring it here to the um, local county level. I want to have an office that is free from political interference and is really a model of ethics and integrity for the county. Can I, can I give um, Ferris also, I want to give you one more opportunity before we end. Um, any platform, any questions I didn't ask you. Um, I was going to ask, maybe you've kind of already addressed some of that, so I want to give you the opportunity sure. to say all that. And you had a comment from Stephen Simpson who said Ferris will make a great judge. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Um, I am just running on a platform of experience mm-hmm. that I've consistently been practicing in Yonkers City Court for the last 15 years. I want to say that so often that when I start to say it, someone finishes my sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that's what it is. I've been in the courts. I know how they work. I have the relevant experience. And I have the commitment to Yonkers. I've been practicing there consistently. I live there. I have my family there. And I want to ensure that when people come to the courts, that they are given their day in court, they're heard, they're treated with respect, and they don't spend a whole day there. They can come in, get their issues resolved, and move on with their life. I am so appreciative of the Yonkers Democratic Party for giving me the opportunity to be one of the three Democratic candidates, along with Thomas Daly and Brendan McGrath. And I just ask that you come out and vote on June 23rd, 2020. So one thing I wanted to add is on the website, Westchester County Post, there's an education and civics section. And feel free to, to email things to me that you want to share, mainly to educate youth, get out the vote, young voters, um, youth, like we we're talking young women, young men, uh, to help engage a new um, section of the population as as new voters so i'd like to put that out there because elena and i really talk a lot about the importance of civics education and how it really hasn't been happening much in the last how many years i don't know it just it seemed to just kind of fade away without Mm -hmm. without us noticing and now we wake up and go don't people understand the three branches of government that they're co-equal and one guy isn't the boss of the others People don't seem to understand that. Mm-hmm. And it's been a very slow process, I think, of uh, losing that knowledge. Mm-hmm. You also have a fan of the show who uh, says, uh, Peg Moore. Um, hi, Peg. And How she are you? Said, she said, hi, Elena and Mimi. Hello, Janelle. She said, and then she said, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's, she's tuned in. We love Peg. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. So um, I'm definitely going to have both of y'all back on I'll show people before politics once y'all make the ballot. And um, hopefully y'all utilize us to continue to get the information out. Um, And I, um, well, once you're in office, you really can't do much with the the press. But I hope that if you win, if and when you win, um, you will continue your relationship with the media, um, not just while you're running. And and, and I just want to say, too, a lot of what you're saying, you do have to understand the two predecessors, if you take it, have said this, Janet said these things, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and um, Scarpino has also promised these things, and some people were disappointed, so they're kind of, you know, frustrated with yeah, their I office. That and, yeah, so, so, um, They say, how do we know you're not just, you know, all politicians tell us stuff, how do we know? And Better they're frustrated than jaded, though. Yeah. No, I mean, there's still some that are jaded. There, yeah. There's some yeah. that straight. They're not, they don't care. They don't, yeah, they don't well, that's, and that's a tragedy. Look, look at my plans because, for example, with transparency for the DA's office, I mean, what I put forth has never been proposed by anyone before. It's, it's revolutionary. It's, it's 
um, you know, just it's re- making real transparency, not just talking about it. Um, and look, I'm not a politician. I've never run for office before. I'm a, I'm a prosecutor. That's what I've done for 16 and a half years. This is my passion. Um, you know, this I want to do this because I believe that I can help make the system better for both victims and for people who are charged in the system and hopefully have fewer people charged in the system by coming up with innovative policies, proactive policies that we're just not doing right now and partnering with the community. So, it, you know, I'm not, I'm, th- this isn't about running for office and winning for me. This is about doing a job and, that I think I will love and be good at and can help my community with. And in order to get there, I've got to run for office. <laughs> That's like my story, maybe. You both- <laughs> What's going on you here? Both are, you both are fresh blood to the system, and that's what's badly needed right now. Fresh blood. We need that's fresh blood. exactly my story. Like, I really shied away from politics, but yeah. it's in order to move forward, this is do. what you have to get into. And so, like, you just have to try to be as authentic yeah. and be yourself and continue to process and understand that, you know, you can do this without getting dirty and nasty. Yeah. Just do what you Just need to do and be motivated. I, 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 wish, I wish both of you ladies um, um, a lot um, well in, a, uh, in, in the upcoming election. Um, and for the people that are listening and watching on, 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 on the live stream and will watch us later, um, I hope that you, the voters, get more engaged and research the candidates more mm-hmm. so that you can be more informed uh, at the ballot box, not just voting row A all the way or just going because the party says this is who you should vote for. Blue or, no matter who. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, um, but, but there's that. that. We'll That's different. Blue no matter who. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. For me, for me. Right, right, right. But, but you know, I hope that the voters, Better death than red. I hope that the voters <laughs> have left this, uh, sh- this episode a little more informed on the candidates and uh, go to their websites. Um, you know, ask them. I'm sure they both have sections where you can ask them questions. Ask them questions. Research them. Look at their record. Are y'all y'all on Twitter? Mm-hmm. So we can reach you Instagram, directly that way. Facebook, Insta- website. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. All right. Going live right here. Oh yes, we're going to start doing uh, hopefully a Facebook Live program. We think on Mondays because it could be. Mondays with Mimi, which just sounds oh, really that's, that's good. Is that going to be on Facebook? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, right. we're working on it, but it, it's a work in progress. But we're hoping to get that up soon because okay. you know a lot of people, more people are staying home these days because Absolutely. of the coronavirus, that's which sure. I totally understand. So we want to give them more to listen to and look at. Absolutely. I'm just praying they don't close my kids' schools. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. No, nah, now's not a good time. You never, it's never a good time. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully, this whole uh, coronavirus thing will they will find the answer to all the situation and it will not affect this upcoming election season because I, I saw some in the presidential primaries they you know they were having to make adjustments like you know they had a drive up thing where you just drive up and hand it in and yes. you know, so so you know I know a lot of people are concerned and mail in um, ballots early voting mm-hmm. that right, would be right. really important to and, alleviate the crowds and and as far as this coronavirus because everybody's asking you wash know, your I, hands I'm, people I'm always packing Perel and, and, and we need to soap wash and our water. hands soap and, and, I, water. and I heard you this morning um, oh you and, did and, and, I, and I agree um too many people um, just walk straight out of the I, stalls this, this had, without washing their hands. Even, even beyond Stop that. Stop doing that, people. Stop even beyond it. that, this has made me wash my hands more mm-hmm. each day. Yeah. But mm-hmm. this has been the Black Westchester takeover, another one <laughs> of the Culturally Lit Show <laughs> with uh, Alina and Janelle. And I want to thank our guests, Westchester District Attorney Candidate Mimi Roca and Yonkers City Court Candidate Veris Shaco. And until next week, when you'll see the ladies, they will be back. I'm out. Peace. Thank you. You're just off camera. Well, one more than the other. (laughs)